everyone, it's me Daniel, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I will show you how I created this exterior render in 5D render, step by step. So, the first thing I want to talk about is that the team at 5D Render reached out to me to take a look at their software, and I couldn't be happier because I have been wanting to explore their software for a while now. And in this video, I will show you how 5D Render works and how easy it is to learn, especially if you are familiar with Lumion. I will show you all the amazing features 5D offers, plus I will dive into their AI tools, which I'm a huge fan of, of course. So let's get started. So I already imported the model that I also used in another video way back. You can import, of course, just SketchUp models, but also other 3D models. The first step I always take is the materials, adding the materials to the model. 5D Render has a big library of all kinds of materials that you can use for your project. In the pro version, there are even more materials than in the free version, of course. You can, of course, use the materials from the library, but you can also use your custom materials. So let's first add all the materials from the 5D Render library where you can find them in the top left corner under the name assets one material i want to talk about in particular is the scatter it's not pretty much a material but it's more like a tool that 5d render offers in the top left of the assets you will find a tab that's called scatter and there are a bunch of materials that you can choose i choose one of them and i put them on top of my model of course of the plane where i want to show the grass and the cool thing about this is that it are small 3D objects of grass, but also weeds and flowers, and it just scatters them random around the plane. This makes it more realistic and looks absolutely great in your renders. After I used my the scatter tool for my grass, I came to every tab and also lowered the scale because it was way too big for this scene. After that, I will add the other materials to the building and the model. One of the coolest features 5D Render offers is the AI generated material texture maps. With just adding the base color into your project, you can generate all the necessary textures that you need to create PBR materials. So in this case, I found a stucco plaster material from the internet and I've imported that one into 5D Render. With just a press on the button, it will generate the textures that I needed. There is even a way where you can enhance the texture so it has a higher resolution. Let's do that as well. Of course there is a lot more to talk about about materials in 5D Render, but that's for another video. The only thing I want to point out in this video to fix some of the UVs that you will see, for example at those rocks, is the repetition that come, comes back. To fix this, because I used the material with a displacement, I put the material template from the displacement to the custom material then it will remove the displacement and then all the way you will find the UV randomizer and when you activate this one it will be fixed so the material wraps around the whole object with all the materials instead of only every separate brick. After we have put all the materials on our model and our building we are going to take the next step into making sure the environment looks good. And to do that, we're going to take a look at all the 3D models 5D Render has to offer. For example, all the nature elements. So in this case, let's add some foliage. 5D Render has a big library with all kinds of foliage. It can go from bot trees to conifers, but also bushes and even some weeds. We're going to use a mix of all of those in this render. So for the foliage, I usually make a mixture of certain trees that I use around the whole scene. In this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to look also a little bit in the library of what 5D Render has to offer. So I'm just taking a few trees, put them around the building, then cover it up with a little bit of bushes and also putting them in the back so you can see them behind the building, but you can also see them in the reflection of the windows. What you also can see is that I use the big trees for all the way in the back, make a layer and then put the smaller trees and bigger bushes in front of them and then layer it up with uh, the front with some smaller flowers and smaller bushes across the edge of the grass or also the tiles. 
And usually if I put something down like foliage, I will go back to the scene for a camera. I will look if it looks great and then if so, then I will go further and continue with putting down some more foliage. After I've placed down all the foliage, I went to the left to the environment tab. And there is all the settings that you can change for the environment to make the scene look better. I played around with some settings, for example the HDRI, which one I wanted to use, and the intensity of the light and the scale of the, uh, also with a little bit of the temperature, etc. So, of course, that's something that you can play around a bit that fits the scene the most. Because five-day render works with ray tracing and real-time rendering, you will see your scene come to life when you adjust some settings, for example the sky or the temperature. That makes the scene look like a whole and then you can change of it later of course. When After I'm happy with the render settings, I go to the render option. You will find that on the top right corner with a little camera icon. Over there you will see all your scenes. So I go back to the scene one and I'm going to make some adjustments. I put the ratio to 60 to 9 and I'm also going to do the focal length is going to be 25 millimeters. I adjust the camera position a little bit so the building is nice in the middle and you will see enough green around it. To fill up the rest of the scene, for example in the background, I used 2D planes that 5D render offers in their library to add a little bit more of depth to the render and also fill up the horizon so you won't see the sky all, all the way through the trees. For the next step after I have added all the foliage and I did some adjustments I went to the interior and I wanted to add some interior to make this building more realistic. I was not going to plan to put an entire interior scene in there so the cool thing about 5D render is that they also offer parallax interior items. You could put them in front of the glass so it looks like there is an entire interior over there. Uh, I made use of them in or behind every window and made sure they were correct and also put the intensity lower because it's daytime and the lights won't be on in this case. I made sure that they are logically placed, that the bigger ones are of course in the bigger areas and the smaller interiors are in the smaller areas, for example the bathroom. Make sure to also look at your scenes, at your cam or your render perspectives, so the scene looks good. And this scene is coming nicely together, but it misses something. So I'm going to add a little bit more of objects on the terrace uh, in front of the building. So I will add a little lounge set in the garden so people can sit over there. I adjust the scale a little bit so it matches the building. And I'm also going to put down some lights or some lanterns with, with, across the walls. That looks really nice. To add a little bit more realism to the building, I'm also going to add some decals. So what I do, I go to the assets type and I go to the model and I'm going to add the decals. I'm just going to select some random decals that I'm probably going to use for in this scene. Uh, especially the ones where it's dripping uh, dirt from the building. So I will put that across the line of the wall or the top of the wall. It makes the building more integrated with the scene and it also makes sure that if you watch the scene that there is a certain way that the building already stands there for a while because it's getting dirty a little bit and it isn't like brand new. Full decals are way too saturated and have way too much color to them and it makes the building a little bit too dirty. Uh, in this case I'm going to adjust the uh, opacity so it makes a little bit of a scene so it looks nice but not too dirty. After we have done that, that's it for the scene. I'm not going to add any more elements, materials or models to the scene. Now we are going to adjust some little bit of the settings that I talked about earlier. Still use the same HDR, the midday 2 and I'm just adjusting some of the light settings and the rotation of the sun. Top right there is also a second uh, tab where you have the name of the effects. Here you can apply a LUT, but I'm not going to do that for this scene. And for the rest there is your standard post-processing elements, for example like the exposure, the shadows, contrast, etc. Uh, I'll keep it simple so I could put the exposure on manual because I prefer that way so I can adjust manually how much light there is in the scene. Also I'm going to change a little bit of the highlight exposure and the shadow after that uh, i'm going to keep the highlight the shadow and the slope i keep that the same of the basic 
I'm not going to change the white balance. And for the last step, I'm just going to add a little bit more of uh, fidget so it makes the scene a little bit more cropped and focused on the middle, so the outer areas are a little bit darker. The only thing to save these settings are that you have to go back to the scene tab and then you have to reset the setting. So you have to retake the picture. Otherwise the settings are not going to be saved. So after that we can go to the render option and we can finally render our scene. But before I'm going to do that I first want to put out the output that I want to do. So for example the resolution or what type of uh, scenes or maps I want to generate. So in this case I'm going for the 6K one and there is a reason for that because the 6K because 5D render offers an AI enhanced tool inside their software and uh, it only works for the a max of the 6K variant. So I'm going to put that on 6K. I also made sure that the options for the channels uh, that I want to export with is also set to the AI post processing. After we have set up everything correctly, we can go to the right, the lower right corner and we can finally render our scene. After we have rendered our image, and that's also really fast because of the real-time rendering in 5D Render, this scene took only 2 minutes and 30 seconds to render, uh, we have the two options. We can open the folder, so the place where you have saved in your or your browser or on your computer. They also give you the option to use the AI post-processing option. And we are going to do that. After we have pressed the button, we are creating a second window. And there you will see the render that we just created. On the right there is are two options. We can use the AI enhancer and also the AI style changer. We are not going to touch the AI style changer. That is for another video. We are going to the AI Enhancer. In the AI Enhancer there are different options that you can choose. Uh, the main difference is that there is an option here where you can select certain elements in your render based on the element, uh, where you can change whether you can change it uh, or it's going to be added to the Enhancer. So for example you can mask out certain things in your render which one will be enhanced by the AI tool or not. So for in this case I want to add almost everything except the building itself. After we have masked everything out, we can also make sure uh, the weight of the enhancer. So you can put it to 1, that's going to be the most, and you can lower it so the AI doesn't change the scene that much. So of course it takes it as, the, as a, the base image and then it's going to add a little bit more elements and a little bit more depth to it. In this case we are going to keep it at 0.7. After the enhancer is completed, uh, 5D render gives us a little two to two images with a slider so you can see the difference between the output of the render and the output of the AI enhancer. And I must say the difference is pretty incredible. It gives the scene more depth and the nature is more put together. Uh, it also does a little bit of post-processing so it makes the scene look overall way better in my opinion. And as you can see in the difference, the building is untouched. So that's actually perfect for have a design or an architect or someone else that just want to change the overall look, but not the building because most times of the building, there is a certain texture that the architect wants to point out. But now because I'm curious, I'm also going to remove the whole masking and I'm just going to use the AI enhancer for the whole scene. And I have to say, even the foliage but also the building it makes it look way better the colors are more nicely together and it gives more depth more detail to the render as well especially when you look at the walls where there are some dirtiness across the top of the wall but also the reflection and what i most likely is the wood that it changes and has a not a very bit of the texture to it and it makes the scene look way more realistic with realistic colors. That's it for the exterior render in 5D Render. I want to thank 5D Render for giving me the opportunity to take a look at their software. It's rare for a community to find with such a supportive and engagement community. With their form packed with valuable resources and tips to learn and grow. AI integration in their software is a truly game changer. It's not only elevated the quality of your render, but also the workflow that really speeds up, which I found personally really helpful. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you want to support the channel. 
and be sure to check out 5D Render because I definitely will. See you guys in the next one. Bye.